بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من ولا أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقول الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا من تمسلمون رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي بذيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين With so many things going on in the world right now whether you see the situation, political situation, Ukraine versus Russia, or the hypocrisy of the media. And we are not shocked on this hypocrisy. We are rather shocked on the consistency, how consistent they are with this. We could talk about so many things right now, but since this is my khutbah after almost three, three and a half months, I came back. This is my first khutbah after I came back. So I just want to share this one or two ayat from Surah Taha as a reminder for myself and for all of you, inshallah ta'ala. But before sharing this one ayah from the ending of Surah Taha, we have to understand the beginning of Surah Taha. So I'll take 10 minutes to explain to you so that we can understand this one ayah in a comprehensive way. Because in today's khutbah, I just want to highlight two points, just two points from one ayah. From one ayah, just two points you'll understand. But before that, you have to understand what's going on in the surah. We all know Musa alayhi salam accidentally, accidentally, killed one person and then he ran away from Egypt because the authorities, the army, the police wanted to arrest Musa salam. and he went almost for a decade in a place called Madian and after a decade Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while telling him that you will be prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him job description and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell him where to go go to Egypt go to Pharaoh and give him da'wah <laughs> and then free Bani Israel and indeed this is a difficult task because this is the last place where Musa Islam would have liked to go because he ran away from Egypt and Allah said you know go to Egypt so this is indeed the most difficult task so Musa Islam asked for a few dua I just want to share that dua before I can discuss my khutbah topic we usually pay attention to the first part of the dua but we ignore the last part of the dua and that is very important for our community work. Entire khutbah of today is actually related to community work. So Musa Ali Salam realized how difficult this task is. He started the dua by saying, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri. O oh Allah, give me confidence. Open my chest for me. Wa yassirli amri. This is very difficult task, Allah. Please make it easy for me. If you will make it easy, it will be easy. It was said that Musa Ali Islam had a stutter in his speech, impediment in his speech. So he's asking, Can you remove the remove the impediment from my speech? Remove the stutter from my speech so that I can improve my communication skills. So that Firaun and his army and everyone there in Egypt will understand me. But the dua continues. We only know from Rabbi Shrahli and Qawli. But then the dua comes. Wajalni waziram min ahli. And Allah, please make or grant me a helper from my family. Haruna Akhi. Harun, my brother, make him a prophet also. He's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his brother a prophet like him. This is a very important point. We'll come back to this. Then he says, kathira, So that we both can glorify you. kathira, And we both will remember you. What's happening here? What's happening? There are a few points to note here. First, Musa Ali Salam, after he realized the difficulty in the task, I have to go to Pharaoh, I have to invite him. I ran away from that place. It will be difficult. He asked Allah to improve his communication skills. But after that, first thing he realized, that this is a huge task and I cannot do alone. I need a team. Even as good as Musa Ali Salam, he realized, even though I'm a prophet, but I cannot do this huge, tremendous task alone. I need a team of qualified individuals. Because if you want to do something big in life, you have to deal and work with people and you have to make a team. If you are alone, you cannot do big things in your life. So he says, min ahali." Can you make, can you grant, grant me a helper 
grant me a helper from my family. Second thing, he's asking Dua to improve his communication skill. And he knew that he have a communication problem. So he said, make Harun a prophet also. What does it mean? In Surah Shura, Musa Ali Salam said, Huwa afsah minni. Harun is a prolific speaker. He's a better speaker than me. Allah, your religion, your message is far more important than my name, than my fame. Your religion, your message deserves that it should be conveyed by the best speaker. Give me Harun, he's a prolific speaker. It doesn't matter who conveys, but he has to be the best person who is conveying. Can you see sincerity in Musa Ali Salam words? We fight in this country for tooth and nail. We fight for the labels, for the titles. Musa Ali Salam says, first thing is your religion and your message. Second thing is titles and labels and all those things, subhanAllah. And then he's willing to share his responsibility because he says, ashrik hufi amri. He says, let Harun share my responsibility. Let Harun share my responsibility. This is the third thing we are learning. What we will do together, we will praise you and glorify you. We will remember you. All these catchy phrases in the modern day leadership, teamwork, motivation, communication, they are fruitless if there is no spirituality. Because if you will have a team of qualified individual, but if they are not spiritual enough, they are working for themselves, not for the higher mission. They will end up, the same team will end up fighting with each other for that title. We have seen that in the same Quran. Here a brother is asking, Musa is asking to make Harun a prophet. In the same Quran, in Surah Yusuf, we have seen 10 bunch of brothers who wanted to almost kill their brother because of prophethood, because of the title. Why? Because lack of spirituality. So they know the importance of spirituality in teamwork. They are saying, We'll be team, but we'll be praising you. You will be center of attention in our teamwork. Keep this introduction in mind. And now let's come to that ayah. This is not my topic. This is an introduction. In the ending of Surah Taha, in the ending of Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually telling us the story. After Musa alayhi salam, after many years, Musa alayhi salam crossed the ocean, Firon is drowned. And now Musa alayhi salam wanted to go to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam asked Harun, lead my nation in my absence while I will be meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going early. When he went, when he left in the absence of Musa alayhi salam, while Harun alayhi salam was leading, some group of Bani Israel had a spiritual crisis and they went back to idol worshipping. They started worshipping cow, as mentioned in Surah Taha, made of gold. Harun alayhi salam as a prophet, he told them not to worship. Why you are going back from worshipping Allah to worshipping an idol? Who was Harun? Prophet, right? I just want to give my khutbah on the response of Bani Israel. When Harun stopped them, you know what was the response of Bani Israel? The response of Bani Israel was, Hatta yarja ilayna Musa. Harun, we will keep worshipping this cow. We won't stop until Musa will return us. What does it mean? Basically, they are undermining Harun Ali Islam's position that if Musa will come back, then you will follow him. Who are you? There are two important lessons we are learning from here. Two important lessons. Number one, this seems confusing, right? Musa and Harun both were prophets. Why Bani Israel wanted to follow Musa, but they didn't want to follow Harun's advice? Did you ever think that way? Harun was speaking on behalf of Allah also, like Musa Ali Salam. He was speaking and he was saying, don't commit shirk. But why they said, no, no, if Musa will come back, we will listen to his advice, not yours. Why? There are many scholars who comment on this. If you see Musa and Harun Ali Salam, both were prophets. But Musa Ali Salam was a super star celebrity in the eyes of Bani Israel. Both were prophets. But who had that staff stick which turned into a snake? Musa or Harun? Musa. Who had that staff or stick which he would throw in the ocean and ocean will be divided? Musa or Harun? Musa. Who had that arm which comes out of armpit 
and it will be shining. Musa or Harun? Musa. Who won that historical debate against Firaun? Musa or Harun? Musa. Musa, Musa, Musa. So he has billion followers on social media. He's a celebrity. And Harun, no one knows him. He's an obscure person. I'm just, just using relative language of today's world. So that's why they were obsessed with the celebrity status or fame. And they said, Harun, he won't follow you. He'll wait for Musa. And this is a sign. This is point number one. When the nation becomes corrupt, when the community becomes corrupt, they will be obsessed with the individuals more than the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter whether Musa or Hanun and Islam. I have to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you are corrupt, when you are obsessed with the individuals more than the deen, when your loyalty, when your dedication is for the individual, not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then these things will happen. And unfortunately, we have this in our community also. Larger Muslim global community. If you see this, our issue is we will either idealize someone or we will demonize someone. We won't keep people at their level. They demonize Harun Ali Salam that we don't want to follow you and they idealize Musa Ali Salam so much that they didn't even follow right advice because it was not coming from Musa Ali Salam. That's our problem. We either idealize people or demonize people. We don't keep people at their level. If there is only one person who deserves this kind of attitude that after his demise or after his death, religion will be collapsed. Who would be that person? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? But even at his death, we all know Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, recited this ayah, Wama Muhammad illa Rasul. Rasulullah sallallahu is just the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is just the messenger of Allah. Qad khalaq min qablihi rasul So many messengers came before him and passed away. So if Rasulullah will pass away or will be martyred, will you turn your back from Allah? Your dedication should be towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second point, and that's the last point inshallah. If you remember, Musa alayhi salam is the one in the beginning of the surah, he asked Allah to share his leadership, share his prophethood, to make Harun a prophet. Remember that five minutes ago? Musa Islam didn't chase fame and name. He says, your deen should be upfront. Harun is a prolific speaker. Let him share my responsibility. Let him share my title so that your deen, your message should be conveyed in a better way. It's not about my name. In the ending of Surah Taha, Allah gave him that reward that he is a celebrity now. When you leave something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you leave something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to give you that thing in a halal and in a better way. When you want to promote yourself, Allah will humiliate you. But when you want to keep yourself behind and you want to promote Allah's deen, Allah's religion, Allah will give you that respect which you could not even imagine, subhanAllah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually said this in Sahih Muslim. Whoever humbles himself or herself, Whoever keeps themselves lower just so that Allah's deen will be higher, Allah will honor them and respect them. SubhanAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this honor, inshallah ta'ala. Why I'm sharing this before we can go to the second part of the khutbah? Why I'm sharing this with all of you? You know, I just came back from uh, my three months sabbatical, the spread between Medina, uh, most of the time in Medina, alhamdulillah, and then last few days in Karachi. Alhamdulillah, when I came back, I noticed Masjid was flourishing, <laughs> Masjid was prospering, Jumma Salah, youth groups, social activity, regular Salawat, this building didn't collapse without me. <laughs> and we fool ourselves, right? We literally fool ourselves that if Imam Asif will go, let, if I'll go, this Masjid will collapse. No. <laughs> Actually, they, this, these all activities happen in a better way, if not in the same way. And Alhamdulillah, this tells me that our masjid is on the right track. Because how many times we have seen a imam will go, or a leader will go, or a president will go, and the entire community will collapse because of over-dependency. How many times? And Alhamdulillah, our masjid is on cruise control, going in the right direction, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
protect our masjid from all the evils. Amin, Ya Rabbi. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not ajiz, is not incapable of bringing more leaders. I'm not doing any ihsan on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not doing any favor on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, this, don't fool yourself. Actually, it is ihsan of Allah, it is a favor of Allah on me, that Allah has selected me and all of you who are working for any capacity of Islamic work, that Allah has selected us. So we should be humble. You know, subhanAllah, people will come and go. This is a message today. People will come and go. Scholars will come and leave. Leaders will come and go. But this masjid should prosper. This institution should prosper. After 50 years, we are in 2022. Let's say in 2072, if my mathematics are working right. <laughs> 2075. We don't want this masjid to be turned into a different place of worship like it's happening with other places of worship. What would be my contribution? If I'm focusing on promoting myself, my name, then this masjid or this institution won't be there. But after 50 years, if people can worship at this place and they can take this community to the next level, then all of our contribution, inshallah, will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's why we should work, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all sincerity. It does not mean that I'm leaving. <laughs> Some of you are happy that I'll be leaving. No, 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 I'm not leaving. I just came back. But I have to leave on a serious note. We all have to leave. Nothing is permanent. If not today, tomorrow, after one year, after 10 years, we all have to die or we all have to leave the community. But the mission of Allah should continue. That's the message which we should learn, inshallah, today. When the last wave of refugees came, whether from Iraq, Syria, Somalia, Albania, one of the most difficult things I have heard and I have seen, I have witnessed also, is that some of these refugees would not get enough help from Muslim community and some of these refugees will actually change their faith because they would get help from other faith-based organizations. I'm pretty sure those of you who are here in Worcester, because Worcester is basically uh, a hub for refugees for the last few years, you might have seen those individuals also. Because if we don't support as a Muslim community in an organized way, and some of them are spiritually weak who are coming as a refugee. If you think that these Afghanis refugees, all of them are Sheikh al-Islam, no. Some of them are spiritually weak, some of them are non-practicing. And if they don't get advice and mentorship and guardianship and support from us, and if they will get from other faith-based organizations, they will eventually, some of them, God forbid, will leave Islam. So it's our responsibility to help them in whatever way we can. And I know some of us, some of us, have reservations about these refugees. But if you compare all the benefits and all the harms, if you compare all the benefits and all the harms, nothing can be compared with them or some of them leaving religion. Because this is the maqsat of the Sharia, objective of the Islamic law, hegzaddin, protection and preserving the religion. Yes, help them, organize them and then teach them so that eventually they will be better Muslim than all of us, inshallah ta'ala. So inshallah, um, and I'm glad that there are organizations like our organization, Muslim Islamic Center Social Services, who are doing every single day, mashallah, I see volunteers cooking food and delivering. That's an amazing thing. May Allah give you guys consistency, inshallah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help all the uh, refugees, inshallah, and all those people who are needy in our community. Ameen, Ya Rabbi. Please make dua. Allahumma ansuril Islam wal Muslimin. اللهم اغزر من خزل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعل معهم اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا دينا إلا قضيت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا ضالا إلا هديت يا أرحم الراحمين الله